Okay, as you saw from the thumbnail and the video title, I will be making a custom doll of Goldilocks. I had to make a Goldilocks doll, so let's get to it. Before we get started, doll customizing involves various dangerous chemicals throughout the process and in use of power tools. It's not for kids. On that note, I wouldn't call my videos tutorials by any means, but I will always credit the amazing doll creators and their tutorials on YouTube that I have learned from. So I'm using this DC Supergirl doll, uh, using the boots that she came with as well. This is actually a Rainbow High shirt blouse that I had in my stock, which I am ultimately going to take apart and destroy to make a pattern. To start, I always shave off all the seams that I can feel with my fingers and all the little numbers and letters that you can find on doll arms and legs. And uh, my footage here is going to be pretty much in chronological order of how, how I worked on this project, so uh, be prepared for some chaos uh, in regards to how I hop around from part to part. I get started on carving out her boots here that are like wedges, and obviously I want to create the more classic boot with a heel for her look, which is dangerous work using a X-Acto knife. Uh, I did in fact cut myself once or twice, and that's why there's a paper, a paper towel under me while I'm working. So I did end up disassembling this, this blouse and making a pattern. Uh, I also made a pattern of her leggings, which uh, was pointless uh, as you'll be able to see later on because I just use another pair of those same leggings. Next, the fun part, chopping all the hair off. It was a little gross and sticky and ugh, a sensory nightmare. Trim it all down as close as you can. I had to soak the head in hot water in order to get it off easily. Once the hair is cut down about as close as you can, it comes out really easily and then you can get all that glue and the remaining bits of hair out. And here is her head, ready to be cleaned. Easy as a wave of the hand and a snap of the fingers. I know my editing skills are mind-blowing. So I got started on her staff pretty early, uh, wrapped a bunch of wire obviously as a base. I decided to use cos clay instead of epoxy sculpt because I wanted it to be flexible, you know, flexible and durable. Uh, I didn't want to risk this prop being breakable um, as clumsy as I am I you know things get dropped and I didn't want to risk epoxy sculpt just snapping um, despite the the wire on the inside so I used the cost clay uh, I did do a couple stages where you know I, I got like the main handle down I baked it continued on to the top of the staff and just fiddled and sculpted from there. The cos clay, that's hard to say, it is uh, nice and malleable. It's pretty easy to sculpt. But when I tried to sculpt the wood grain into it, it was a little bit too malleable to, to do that. So uh, ultimately I decided to cure it in the oven and then once it was cured and much firmer i could go in and basically like gouge wood grain into the staff with my super coarse sandpaper and even the little handles of my sculpting tools there which are you know metal and really rough so the first the first coat of paint that i put on um was a little bit too light and a little bit too saturated and i mixed up darker more desaturated brownish black for the next round of painting and then eventually we moved on to dry brushing some black on there to get that multi-dimensional look of the wood grain and in the end i was pretty pleased with the final product I ultimately shrunk her head in acetone. It's smaller, much firmer, which I like working with rather than a really squishy vinyl head. 
Here she is next to her staff. Uh, size and height looks pretty good. The next phase of her boot modification. I actually off camera used my Dremel tool to make the surface of those boots uh, really rough because that way the air dry clay would grab onto it really well. I also cut a few little windows in the boots so that the clay could grab onto itself like through the little windows and just create a really secure attachment to these rubber boots. Are they rubber? Vinyl? I'm not really sure. So I always had references uh, handy while I was working on Goldie's boots. Obviously they're mismatching. So one of them was really, really tall and so it needed to be built up pretty high. The other one didn't really need to be built up so much. So I really packed on a lot of extra air dry clay here. It's just way too squishy before it dries to really sculpt it uh, as thin as I want it. So I built it up and then when it, was, when it was dry, I used my Dremel tool and grind it down. So naturally I had to make a crap ton of hair wefts. I made various ones, some combination of this gold and cream color, some strictly cream, some strictly gold, a lot of them with the gold color so that I had some options. The next phase of the boots, I am using my flexible glue uh, cost flex. Uh, it dries flexible. It's a lot like Mod Podge and I decided that I was going to try out using fabric to create the boot which I would then paint with a mixture of this cost flex and acrylic paint. So rather than trying to sculpt the look of, you know, rippling folding leather with the air dry clay, which I tried and it didn't really work, I'm actually sculpting with fabric using the glue, layers of fabric. And as I apply the fabric onto the boot, you know, creating those folds and those ripples that you see in well-worn leather boots. And once the boot is covered in fabric, I apply the several layers of acrylic mixed with this Cosflex glue. It just ensures that the paint is going to remain flexible. And while the first boot is drying, I am working on the fabric sculpting of the second boot, the much taller one. We gotta build up the top part of the boot, which actually folds over, folds forward, um, that Goldie is wearing. And so I fiddled around with adding extra fabric, creating that sort of tongue that slouches and folds over. And then we move on to adding more layers of fabric that help create all those folds. I think I forgot to mention it's just t-shirt fabric so it stretches I can stretch it any way I want and it's really forgiving the sculpting with fabric actually turned out to be pretty fun I wasn't sure it was going to work any better than trying to sculpt with the clay but it did since I started with the shorter boot uh, it didn't turn out as well as I wanted because I was, you know, figuring figuring things out. Uh, the second boot was, I was much happier with the result. Yeah, once I'm happy with the, the fabric and the folds, went, went in with the glue paint mixture. Uh, I did use a Sharpie to kind of get some little nooks and crannies that I didn't reach. And just like with the staff, my first, uh, my first go with the paint was way too saturated, with too red brown, so uh, adjusted the color to a much more desaturated grayish brown and here I am working on making some leather by just saturating this little bit of t-shirt fabric with that paint glue mixture and you know both the shoes and the fabric it's several layers of this glue paint and eventually yeah the the t-shirt texture kind of like disappears 
underneath it and it starts to look a little bit more like leather. I then went in once that was all dry and used this cheap sponge brush and dry brushed two different tones in there to create that sort of multi-tonal leather look. Some saturated brown, some black, and I was really, really happy with how the paint job of my leather came out. All of Goldilocks's beadwork jewelry details were nearly the death of me. Here I'm stringing the, the pearls that are all wrapped around her staff. So this is the point of the project where I threw out the leggings that I made myself uh, after I realized that since I was just planning on painting them with the glue paint to make them into leather, I could just use the pair of leggings that I already had that fit her. These leggings belong to the Wonder Girl, Wonder Woman of the same doll series. So yeah, perfect match. Uh, I just had to remove that little side strip of star ribbon and got to work. This is when I uh, committed to her outfit because she was going to be literally glued into these pants. With this many layers, it does seep through the pants, so... Um, but it does remain flexible, and that's, that's the whole point of having that glue mixed in with the acrylic. And her pants get the same paint job treatment as her boots. Uh, I really did not like that the original red of these boots was showing on the bottom, so I decided they needed to be totally covered, totally finished, and I created these, you know, leather sole bottoms to her boot and it's like a, a stretchy fake leather so it was really easy to work with here so i just covered all the little pieces of her boot her heel everything underneath and ultimately i did end up uh, trying to color correct the red tone of this material and i used a blue sharpie a really dark blue that uh, could counteract that red. I even intended to go over it with black Sharpie, but I liked this sort of purplish tone I got. Yet more bead stringing for the beads in her hair. I'm being supervised by my uh, director here. He does not care if you can see what I'm doing. Now here's where my imitation leather comes into play. I cut that bit of fabric into strips to complete her leather wrapped legging look that she's got. And just like her pants, these wrappings are glued to her legs. And let me introduce you to the all-star tool of my entire project, the wooden skewer that came with a cup of pineapple I bought on a road trip. In all seriousness, that skewer and also many toothpicks were very valuable tools for me in this project, especially working with the super glue. And while I am relying on the glue to attach these straps, I did want there to be some realism in the fact that they're wrapped and crossed and that the end of these wraps were kind of secured realistically rather than just ending and being glued. So that's one leg done. The, the straps do not impede her, her knee from bending, but I did eventually cut into the pant leg of the other side because her knee couldn't really bend. You'll see that adjustment later on. I did not manage to film that part of my process. So this side did not require as much in terms of strap, um, but I do finish it up the same with kind of, you know, tucking the end of it into itself and snipping it off. At this point, I was quite proud of these leggings and I fixed that slight color difference a little later. I don't have the footage of me wrapping the pearls, but I had to use some super glue, which dries kind of white and cloudy, so I used a little paint to hide that. 
Goldilocks is my first face up for a human doll. And while I have years of experience rendering skin tone and painting digitally, I this is an entirely different ball game. There's just a huge learning curve here to work with entirely new medium in terms of these pastels, the powders, as well as the watercolor pencils. But it was really fun to just jump into something entirely new. I am of course using the tried and true Mr. Super Clear as the base before I do my face up as well as uh, intermittently sealing in the work and continuing to layer on the pastels and the watercolor pencil. Goldilocks is such a fun character in the movie. She's so spunky and sassy. I decided to give her an asymmetrical expression, one eyebrow up, one down. That obviously makes my life easier uh, in terms of doing her face because I'm not trying to achieve perfect symmetry. I did do some body blushing uh, for funsies, you know, just to get some practice in, but ultimately her clothes are permanent. She's sewn into them and you're not going to see any of this anyway. Don't mind me taking a break to string a bracelet I will be wearing for the rest of the video. So it's time to try out some different shades of blues and greens to get her eyes right. I could have sworn that I sealed that with Mr. Super Clear, and yep, here we here we are just making mistakes and learning from them. Decided to go with a side glance for her rather than her looking straight at you because I feel like dolls looking at you is a little creepy. And I should note that I'm not going for hyper-realistic painting here. Uh, some doll artists are, do incredible work and can create some very realistic looking eyes, which I think is amazing. I know I'm not at that skill level, and at the same time, I just personally uh, prefer a more simplified look for, for the doll's face. And as you can see, there are other projects present in this video. I'm ADHD. I, I can't work on one thing at a time. The little unicorn guy back there is, uh, is another project that you'll see in time. Then I move on to wet watercolors. I just wet my paintbrush and get pigment right off of the end of the pencil. And I did want to stay true to her character design where she obviously has very light blonde eyebrows and eyelashes. Achieving the blonde eyelashes was a struggle. And finally getting those catch lights on her eyes and they're starting to look so alive. So I really jumped around with all the different elements of this project. I started working on her hair wefts, adding some dimension to them with some pastels. I then returned to her face and this is me struggling with her eyelashes. To create Goldilocks's awesome scrap skirt, I needed a massive pile of strips of fabric. I did ultimately attempt to sew uh, all these scraps together at first, but that, that didn't really work out. Yeah, I resorted to old reliable hot glue for this. As you can see, I have like little loops of ribbon as the base of the skirt to add some volume and lift to all the scraps. Now this is actually the second corset I made for Goldie. The first one I made to fit the nude doll and I did not account for all of the fabric that would be underneath the corset and it didn't fit. So I had to make a second one. Both times the process was the same. I used Warbler to make the corset and I just glued fabric to the outside of it. So here as I'm gluing on her wrist leather strap, you can see that she's wearing all her clothes. The corset is so bulky and it doesn't have that nice fitted corset look. Anyway, with this teeny tiny little leather strip she wears wrapped around her wrist, fabric pins were my best friend. They were the perfect little precision tool for maneuvering this tiny, tiny strip of fabric. In the movie, you actually get a close-up. This leather is wrapped around her wrist and her hand. 
Of course, I couldn't really add too much of this uh, wrapped around her hand because she still needed to be able to hold her staff. With the help of my fabric needles, I do manage to get this little leather wrap cuff finished up and glued onto her. And here is where I decided to throw out the second corset I made and go back to the first one. I ended up cutting it in half to the point where it just covers her bust. This way, none of the skirt is actually underneath it. As you can see here how far the, all the material of the skirt sticks out. So for her corset to actually look like a corset that really fits her snugly, I had to get creative here. My solution was having the Warbler corset sit right above the skirt, all the extra bulk, and then have a single layer of fabric extending down to the, to the length that the corset is in the movie. And that way it doesn't have a big bump where the fabric of the skirt is underneath the corset. And ultimately to achieve that snug look, she had to be cinched and stitched in to this corset. And a hot tip, if you can't find your thimble, that warbler shoe you made that didn't really work out for that other doll actually works great. Sadly, I couldn't really find my footage of making that blouse. I'm not sure if I didn't press record or I maybe wasn't able to record it because it required a lot of hand stitching that I needed to do like right up close to my face and I couldn't really film it very well. But I finished stitching her up in her corset. I stitched it closed from top down to the bottom and then back up again to make sure it was really secure. I then super glued and trimmed the little leather strip uh, waistband there and added the, the little leather straps that in the movie you can see look like they hold her corset together. And you know, aside from her being bald at this point, she's starting to look like Goldilocks and it was so exciting. Now the last detail for her outfit is the single leather strap she has on one side of her corset. And even though I'm gonna be gluing it down, I added some stitches to make it look like it's stitched to her corset. And I used that same leather, fake leather fabric that I used on the bottom of her boots and it worked out really great. And that's it, her outfit's done. And I'm honestly so proud of it. Remember when I told you I had to fix the color difference in the legging and the wrap? Yeah, that's what I gotta do here. Just some dry brushing black onto those leggings. And here you can also see where I cut that leather pant leg to allow her knee to bend. Now here is where I painstakingly create the pieces of her big chunky gem necklace out of epoxy sculpt. I cut very thin little rectangles and then cut even smaller little corners off of it to create these square-ish gems. Once my little teeny tiny epoxy gems were dried or cured, they got their paint job and then to make them look like they're gems set in metal, I pressed them into little globs of hot glue and then trimmed the hot glue around the square gems and it actually worked pretty well to create that look of a gem in its metal jewelry setting. I used my gold metallic paint marker to paint the hot glue of these gems and finish them up. And then the way that I assembled this necklace, I just had this uh, metallic thread that I found in the sewing box. I glued it to the back of each gem and then in between, I actually strung a little red bead in between and, you know, I had to shape it into the necklace shape since I was gluing this thread to the back. Next, I tie her necklace on, uh, secure the knot with some super glue and trim it back. And that's it. Her necklace is done. Somehow I forgot to record making that other necklace with the pearls. 
As you can see, her hair is mostly done, and I'll tell you the truth, it was nearly the death of me. I have completed only one other doll project, and she didn't have any hair. So this was a real challenge for me. Working underneath my camera was just too hard. But if you want to know how I made her hairstyle, for the most part, I followed the Space Bun tutorial by Mozekito. Only I had to go through this process of adding so much extra hair to make these buns as massive as Goldilocks's hair is in the movie. I basically made more hair wefts, but I added glue to both ends so that I could sew them on around the buns that I already had and just add another after another after another until I got the big bulky Goldilocks buns that I needed. This ended up being a super delicate process though because I had already attached the string of beads that she wears in her hair so I had to like really carefully tuck the glued ends of these hair wefts underneath the beads and carefully stitch them in. It was a whole process. Finally, her buns became the really poofy, gigantic things uh, that they really needed to be for her to truly embody Goldilocks. You can see her mismatched earrings here as well, and of course, I don't have that footage. So here she is uh, in our kitchen, and you can see she stands up all on her own. She can hold her staff. I am so damn proud of this doll. So let's take her outside during golden hour and see how pretty she is. So this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I will be auctioning off Goldilocks once this video hits, let's say 1000 likes. So share it with your friends and help this channel grow. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future projects. I have so many ideas. just record a bunch of random shit. Let's-a go!